Hello students, this is Dr. Ranjini. Welcome to e-learning session in microbial technology. In this session, we learn the biotechnological importance of microorganisms. Microorganism is a living thing that is too small to be seen with the help of naked eye. We cannot see them by our naked eye. The scientist Anthony Van Leeuwenhoek invented the microscope. And this invention helped us to view these unseen organisms. The use of scientific and engineering principles to the processing of materials produced by microbes to create beneficial products, beneficial proteins, or beneficial processes for the betterment of human life is called microbial technology. What is microbial technology? We are using scientific and engineering principles for processing of the microbial product or for the certain the processes which will be exhibited by the microorganism for the betterment of human life. That is called microbial technology. Let's see why you, you have to use these microorganisms for the betterment of human life. Microbes are ubiquitous in their distribution. We all know microorganisms are present everywhere. They are ubiquitous in their distribution. Not only that, they can grow on cheaper raw materials. We can grow these microorganisms on a very cheap raw materials. As we all know, the microorganism can grow even on dead and decaying organism. So there, the food requirement is very cheap. The microbes generation time is very less. Under ideal growth conditions, bacteria can take five to 30 minutes. The growth of the microorganism, though it is highly complex and coordinated process, ultimately expressed by increase in cell number or cell mass, that is the growth. The process of the growth depends on availability of the nutrient or essential nutrient or requisite nutrient and their transport into the cells and their transport into the, the cells. Not only this, uh, nutrient play an important role, but also many environmental factors also decides the growth of the microorganisms like uh, aeration, oxygen supply, and then pH of the media, and even the temperature where we are culturing the microorganism. So this doubling time, this generation time or the doubling time refers to the time period required for doubling the weight of the biomass, doubling the weight of the biomass, while the generation time represents the period for doubling the cell numbers, period for doubling the cell numbers. Doubling times normally increases with increasing cell size and complexity. For example, as we saw here, the bacteria, they take around five to 30 minutes for converting one cell into two cells. And even in certain bacteria, this uh, doubling or the generation time may go up to one hour. For example, yeast, they take one to two hours. Animal cells, they require 25 to 48 hours. Plant cells require 20 to 70 hours. So in general, when all the conditions are kept optimum, ideal for the growth of the micro organism, the supply of the nutrient will decide the growth of the microorganism. The next point is the microbial growth is season independent and can be easily grown and manipulated. Microorganisms can be grown in the laboratory condition under in vitro condition without any season effect. And next point is these microorganisms Few microorganisms, they 
depend on the other microorganisms for their food or for their life but certain microorganisms have the capacity of synthesizing their own food material so such autotrophic microbes have high efficiency of solar light conversion that means they convert the solar energy into chemical energy in the presence of certain pigments which play an important role in photosynthesis or conversion of solar energy to chemical energy so that will be considered or that will be uh, utilized for the synthesis of the food material bacterial cells have extra chromosomal dna called plasmids in the cytoplasm the bacterial cell has the extra chromosomal dna called plasmids and these plasmids can be manipulated to express the desired gene or to express the desired protein by recombinant dna technology useful metabolites produced by the microbes are extracellular in secretion this makes isolation process very easy the important useful desired metabolites will be produced by the microorganism and these uh, products or the metabolites will be produced extracellularly they will be secreted out of the the cell and there are certain uh, the metabolites which are intracellular in secretion but the extracellularly secreted metabolite production uh, will help in uh, isolation process will be easy to isolate and purify such microbial metabolites which are extracellular in their secretion microorganisms like spirulina chlorella and other blue green algae are rich in proteins and vitamins could be consumed in dried forms so these microorganisms are rich in proteins and vitamins in addition to that there are many useful uh, the nutrients will be available in these blue green algae and they can be consumed in the dried form so these microorganism will be grown and their culture will be sun dried and after that it will be consumed in the form of powders or in tablets or certain uh, food products will be prepared and will be consumed microbes are widely used in large scale industrial processes because of their importance nutritional importance these are culture in large scale in industry they are crucial for the production of variety of metabolites such as ethanol butanol lactic acid and riboflavin as well as the transformation of the chemicals that help to reduce the environmental pollution so these microorganism because of their capability to produce important metabolite these are cultured in large scale and they are produced in industrial processes microbes can be used to create biofertilizers or to reduce metal pollutants these microbes are proteinaceous in nature rich in nitrogen components and apart from that they are also rich in many useful nutrients that will be utilized as the bio fertilizer and also to reduce the metal pollutants these microbes can also be used to produce certain non microbial products such as insulin that will be used to cure the diabetes so initially the insulin was isolated from the 4 year old calf later it was uh, produced in the pig to overcome the uh, the immunological reaction that will be elicited by this uh, the pig insulin and other aspects this insulin will be produced by the e coli insulin will be produced by the e coli nowadays we are treating most of the diabetic patient using this uh, recombinant insulin which is produced in the e coli few microbes produce certain secondary metabolites like antibiotics flavonoids toxins are having high pharmaceutical importance in human life microbes not only used to produce the 
the metabolites which are required for the growth and development apart from that there are certain microorganisms where they produce a certain uh, metabolites in very low concentration to overcome the extreme environmental condition or it may be uh, the absence of the nutrient or it may be the environmental condition in order to sustain its viability it will produce certain components or produces certain metabolites they are called secondary metabolites that includes antibiotics flavonoids toxins etc and these are having pharmaceutical importance and hence these microorganisms will be exploited for the production of these secondary metabolites this is regarding the biotechnological importance of microorganism why we are using these microorganism for the betterment of human life so it may be for the production of certain uh, proteins or desired product or for the uh, production of uh, certain uh, secondary metabolites or it may be certain processes which will be beneficial for the betterment of life that's why we are using these micro organism next we will move on to so when we are using the micro organism in the bio industry for the large scale production of these metabolites which are having the importance in the human life so we should see certain characteristic of the micro organism when we are using in the bio industry the microbes use must be contamination free that means when we are producing certain uh, uh, important uh, primary metabolites or the secondary metabolites it should be only particular microorganism should be growing it should not be contaminated with other micro organism for example bacteria should not be uh, contaminated with the phage so like this so when we are uh, concentrating on the production of particular uh, metabolite only the specific microorganism should be there and they should grow in simple media they should not require the uh, very costly nutritional requirement should not be required by the micro organism minimal uh, nutritional requirements are, uh, should be useful in culturing the the large scale uh, micro organism for the and their product also preferably not required growth factors that is pre formed vitamins nucleotides and acids so cheaper raw material if they require for their growth it will be easier to consider in by industry the organism should be genetically and physiologically stable so the microorganism should be stable it should not change its uh, uh, genetic makeup uh, soon after few experiment hence they must resist random mutations the organism when we are using in bio industry should also accept certain uh, degree of genetic manipulation to enable the creation of strains with more acceptable properties when we are uh, culturing the microorganism under laboratory condition under uh, in vitro condition it should accept certain stable genetic manipulation for um, maximum production of the particular protein or certain ph pharmaceutically important uh, metabolites microbes should grow vigorously and rapidly the growth period must be shorter so that uh, the repetition of the experiment or the the production of the uh, important uh, metabolite will be easier so this uh, the growth period should not be more than 24 to 36 hours because a certain metabolite production takes place only at the particular stage of the the growth so if the the growth period is too long it will be very difficult for us to isolate the product or for the large scale production of the particular metabolite will be difficult so these micro organism should lead to a single desired product in a short time if possible so it should not produce more than one product so if it is contaminated the separation or the purification will be very difficult the product should not contain unwanted materials and other toxins and uh, microbes should produce their products extra cellular cellularly to reduce the cost price so in order to make the isolation and purification um, make it easier the microorganism should produce their products extra 
similar. So it will be easy for isolation and uh, purification. Microorganism should produce the product of interest in high yield. So it should produce the, the desired protein or the metabolite in high yield. Microbes used should be non-pathogenic. It should not cause any disease. The organism should not be too highly demanding of oxygen. When we are growing the microorganism, we usually grow them in the fermenter. You'll be learning about that in coming slide. So you should not require too much of oxygen. The microbes should be conserved for an extended period and become viable after thawing process. That means the microbes can be easily stored under lower temperature. So if you want to revive back, if you want to uh, grow the same culture, you can just thaw the uh, microorganism, you can bring them to the room temperature, and again, you can grow for culturing them. So they should, they should be conserved for an extended period and they can be stored and you can make them viable for the production of particular metabolite. This is regarding the few important characteristics should be served by the microorganism in order to uh, consider in the bioindustry for the large scale production of the particular metabolite. Next, uh, we'll move on how these microorganisms can be cultured. We know microorganisms are ubiquitous in their distribution. You can isolate them from different sources like uh, soil, water, or air. Yeah or even genetic manipulations are uh, uh, incorporated or recommended by the recommended DNA technology in order to get the microorganism having the desired characteristic to produce the large scale uh, um, uh, primary or the secondary metabolite. So these microorganisms are cultured on the, the growth media is the balanced food supplement it is supplemented with the sources of the carbon. So when you are growing the microorganism under the in vitro condition, you should give them the nutrient. You should have the balanced carbon source, nitrogen source, phosphorus, amino acids, trace elements, etc. And when you are growing the microorganism on the media or the nutritional supplement, the media should be sterilized. It should not have the contamination with the other micro organism. It has to be sterilized and then desired microorganism for the particular metabolite will be inoculated with the specific microorganism for the specific microbial product. So you can grow this microorganism on the solid culture or on the liquid culture. Solid culture, as we all know, the media will be supplemented with the solidifying agent like agar agar or gel right so this will provide the adsorbing surface for the growth of the microorganism so that is solid media in liquid media usually the broth so it will be cultured in the form of the suspension and the media will not be supplemented with any uh, agar or the gel right so it is just the the liquid media without the solidifying agent and will be usually grown in the fermenters So the fermenters will be used for the culturing the microorganism. Fermenter is a vessel designed to carry out uh, fermentation process that is uh, biological reactions under controlled conditions. Hence it is also known as bioreactor. While designing the fermenter, several criteria which help in maximizing the yield are taken into consideration that include, so the fermenters are designed for long-term operation in aseptic condition. Adequate aeration and agitation will be maintained inside the fermenter. Air will be supplemented or air will be air will be plunged inside the, the fermenter. So inlet will be provided. 
to this big furnace or the furnace uh, the fermenter and at the same time the the released air or the uh, oxygen after it is utilized by the microorganism after respiration the remove uh, air that is produced by the the microorganism will be thrown out of the fermenter by the outlet there will be ph control in order to maintain the the ionic strength of the the media inside the the fermenter and this uh, fermenter will be uh, provided with the the central shaft to which the blades will be attached or the paddles will be attached so that will be connected to the motor so when we switch on the motor this stirrer or the central shaft with the blade will move so this will give the agitation or the mixing of the media takes place so the homogeneous growth of the microorganism takes place inside the fermenter otherwise what will happen the cells settles at the bottom they utilize the nutrient and they grow but the the media will be heterogeneous in production of the desired product and uh, the fermenter will be having the uh, space or the uh, the option for the transfer of the the inoculum or the microorganism will be added and this will be having the minimum labor in operation in harvesting or cleaning or the maintenance temperature control system will be attached to the fermenter in order to maintain the particular temperature the minimum evaporation losses from the fermenter it will be closed and uh, uh, if the uh, froth is formed anti foaming agent will be added in order to avoid the foam inside the the fermenter and this fermenter will be suitable for a variety of processes and fermenter is provided with limited amount of uh, medium containing all the nutrients at uh, optimum uh, uh, environmental condition and at the same time uh, in uh, fermenter it will be uh, provided with uh, the outlet where you can collect the used media or the spent that will be collected frequently and uh, later it will be used for the isolation of the product or uh, isolation of the cell so that can be uh, spent will be drained out in the outlet so this is just the the basic uh, design of the fermenter how it will be used to grow the microorganism under in vitro condition when we culture the microorganism the microorganism culture can be divided into open culture and closed culture in general it will be referred as batch culture then another one is continuous culture and uh, another type is it is just the modification of the batch culture that is called pet batch culture so microorganisms can be cultured in a closed fermenter then it is called as batch culture here in this culture microorganism will be inoculated to the the known volume of the media it will be inoculated into known volume of the media further there is no supplementation of the media inside the fermenter and the microorganism grow in the media supplemented in the fermenter until the nutrients are there in the the fermenter and once the nutrients are uh, over or exhausted or when the toxic metabolites are uh, uh, deposited inside the fermenter the growth ceases that means the absence of the nutrient depletion of the nutrient control the growth at the same time the toxic metabolites uh, secreted or deposited in the fermenter will inhibit the growth of the microorganism as the fermenter is supplemented with the the media minimum volume of the media further there is no supplementation of the the media from the beginning of the inoculation to the end the microbial culture passes through several stages in case of the batch culture if you plot the time on x axis if you plot the time on x axis 
and the log number of uh, living cells that is the turbidity uh, absorbance on the y axis you get the sigma typical curve like this in case of batch culture you have the media at time 0 you have the media at time 0 you have the media to this you have inoculated few cells as soon as you inoculate the cells into the media the cell will not divide instead it absorbs the nutrient and it will enlarge its cell size and it will synthesizes the protein in, uh, enzymes in the nucleosides nucleotides required for cell to undergo cell division due to that you will get the same absorbance will be maintained for short duration the this the length of this uh, region depends on the the type of the cell you have inoculated number of the cell you have inoculated and the stage from which you have isolated the cell so this phase is called as the the lag phase it's actually the preparative phase for the cell to undergo cell division and here the same uh, absorbance will be maintained for few hours and this is called lag phase after lag phase after after the cell synthesizes the protein enzymes and other requisites for cell to undergo division now the cell starts dividing as the cell divides absorption also increases and here the nutrient initially the nutrient concentration is very high due to which the absorbance increases continuously and the cell growth takes place in the number as well as in the cell size and this is called growth phase or trophophase it's otherwise called as log phase or exponential phase it is exponential phase after exponential phase since there is no further supplementation of the media inside the culture uh, flask or in the fermenter the growth ceases cells will be viable they will not divide cells will be viable they will not divide due to which same number of cells will be maintained for very long duration since there is no supplementation of the nutrient inside the fermenter same absorbance will be maintained that is called stationary phase that is called stationary phase further since it is a closed culture system there is no supplementation of the nutrient there is no supplementation of the nutrient due to which cell dies and the absorbance decreases that is called decline phase that is called decline phase or the death phase so this typical uh, uh, sigmoid curve we will observe in case of the batch culture it's a closed culture there is supplementation of the nutrient only once there is no further supplementation of the nutrient and due to which the depletion of the nutrient will decide the growth of the the microorganism at the same time toxic components or the metabolites deposited inside the fermenter will limit the growth of the microorganism so this is the the growth curve you observe in case of the the batch culture or it is a closed culture next we'll move on to the continuous culture continuous culture is that where a steady exponential phase or the growth phase trophophase is achieved usually growth retards due to depletion of the nutrients in case of the the batch culture but in case of the continuous culture the growth will not be retarded instead we will have the steady exponential phase or the growth will be maintained rather than the accumulation of the the toxic products will be removed by the the uh, removed from the fermenter in the form of the spent that will be removed due to which the uh, toxic sub substances will be removed out of the fermenter that also will promote the growth of the microorganism as there is uh, the intermittent supply of the nutrient inside the fermenter it is called open culture the continuous culture is called open culture and uh, here uh, Uh, the supplementation of the nutrient as well as the the uh, removal of the spent which is uh, filled with the toxic substance will maintain the cell in the steady exponential phase so the microbial biomass will be continuously produced in the 
continuous uh, culture cells will be maintained in the exponential phase for longer duration for the large scale production of the the metabolite as a result of which the exponential uh, phase of the growth uh, 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 microorganism will be maintained for a very long time in earlier culture that is batch culture it's a closed culture only once nutrient will be provided whereas in case of the continuous culture there is the further supply intermittent supply of the nutrient takes place inside the fermenter through the inlet at the same time after the standardized time of growth of the microorganism the spent will be removed due to which the toxic substance will also be removed and the fresh media will be drawn inside the fermenter and hence the cells will be maintained in a continuous growth or in the exponential uh, phase for very long period so this is continuous culture next uh, the another uh, method is the fed batch culture it is just the modification of the batch culture in batch culture usually only once nutrient will be provided but in case of the fed batch culture it's modified a batch culture basically it is the batch culture which is fed continuously the nutrient will be added continuously to the same fermenter without the removal of the spent without the removal of the original culture media from the fermenter as a result of this the continuous increase in the volume of the media takes place inside the fermenter cells will be grown for uh, a little longer exponential phase in case of the fed batch culture compared to batch culture but here the volume of the media will be increasing inside the fermenter as we supplement the media fresh media inside the same fermenter so you learned how the microorganism will be culture one is batch culture continuous culture and another one is fed batch culture so in this session we learned the biotechnological importance of microorganism and the general basic uh, design of the fermenter and how these microorganism will be cultured for the useful metabolite for the betterment of human life i hope you understood this session thank you